All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at uh, part one of the nervous system. Uh, part one is all about the parts of the brain, but just as a little intro, I just want you guys to, to pause this and stare at her little nose here for 30 seconds. Once that 30 seconds is up, I want you guys to stare at the ceiling or close your eyes and see if there's any difference. So you can go ahead and do that now. So pause it. So hopefully now <laughs> that it's worked, you've noticed that it has been a complete change and now you can actually see your color. So it's an optical illusion. So it's something that our brain perceives one way or that we perceive it one way and then when it goes through our brain and after time, certain things happen uh, and it appears to us a little bit differently. So we're going to talk about what happened there and why it happened in the next unit, but I thought that was just a nice little intro for you guys. Okay, so we're looking at the parts of the brain. So here's a picture of your MRI and then just a 3D version of our brain here. So our skull, we have a bunch of different layers. And as we know, the whole point of the skull is to protect our brain from injury. There's all these different plates that are fused together uh, in an adult. In a fetus or a newborn baby, all of these plates are still separated. And that's why the uh, baby's head is so soft and so fragile. So looking at the arteries of the brain, so this is the uh, what provides nutrients uh, to the brain in order for it to be able to uh, participate in cellular respiration, which means making its energy. So for example, if there is a problem where there's something blocking one of these arteries, it results in lack of oxygen getting to the brain, which is called a stroke, which causes irreversible damage to the brain. Uh, the meninges is the part that separates the uh, bone and the nervous tissue in the head or in the brain I guess and and for anybody that's ever had meningitis all that is is a bacterial infection that happens between the uh, bone and the nervous tissue. The cerebrum large part of the human brain it's associated with any of our higher brain function thought and action and it's divided up into four lobes so here are your four lobes frontal parietal, occipital, and temporal, and we're going to break those down in a second, so you might want to pause that to get it down. And here are the four lobes. First lobe is the frontal lobe, so it's anything to do with reasoning, planning, uh, parts of speech, movement, emotions, and problem solving. The parietal lobe is anything to do with uh, movement, orientation, recognizing things, and perceiving stimulus. So for example, if something is you touch something, you're going to be able to perceive whether or not it's hot or cold or sharp or dull, smooth, rough. Occipital, so this is anything with visual processing, actually trying to distinguish what you're seeing. And then finally, temporal load, this is anything to do with uh, stimuli from, uh, from sound, memory, or speech. So two things that we're going to look at, the difference between uh, retrograde and anterior grade amnesia. Retrograde is where some sort of trauma has happened and you can't remember anything before that certain point. And anterior grade amnesia is a problem with the hippocampus, which is in the temporal lobe. And this is a problem with converting short term into long term memory. So you just cannot make new memories, essentially. Okay, so you can check out the 51st dates. That's where this uh, person could not have any short term memories converting into long term. Okay, cerebellum, so this is all about uh, balance and movement, right at the back of the brain here. Thalamus, so this is the region right here in the middle above the brain stem or the midbrain. Uh, and all this is is just the part where uh, it decides where everything else should be processed. So it, all everything that's sensed by the brain is going to be coming into this area and then it's going to feed it out to peripheral regions of the brain for it to be processed. So the hypothalamus we've talked about quite a bit before. This is under the thalamus. So here is the hypothalamus. So here's the thalamus. And what this is going to be doing is it's uh, basically allowing uh, for us to regulate body temperature, water balance, and blood pressure as we know from our uh, excretion unit and our sexual or sorry our reproduction unit where things are wanting to make sure they're in balance the hypothalamus is what's going to control certain hormones from being uh, added or, or closed and then the endocrine system we're going to touch a bit a little bit on the next three but for this one you don't have to worry about it
Okay, medulla oblongata, you guys have talked about this plenty of times already when we're doing the respiratory and the circulatory system, um, but it also has to uh, do with the reflex just in general. So swallowing, vomiting, sneezing, coughing, but for our uses, uh, we're looking at the cardiovascular and the respiratory. And then to finish off here, so we have our spinal cord. This is where nerves are going to be branching out from the spinal cord. And whatever is going to be damaged, wherever it gets severed, anything below that won't work. So if you get damaged to your C1 to C3, anything below your neck muscles aren't going to work. Okay, so hope that helps. And if you have questions, bring them on in.